at the pump. You will have noticed that Tanzania recently reduced the cost of petroleum products from 1st of November, while Kenyans remain the same or just marginally changed. Tanzania said it was reducing prices because of decrease in the world oil prices by an average of 5.68%, while premiums for importation of petroleum products had decreased by an average of 13% for super petrol, also known as premium motor gasoline or premium motor spirit, and 25% for automotive gas oil or diesel. We will not hear that story here because of the corrupt dealings written into the Ruto deal. As ships accumulate extra charges on the high seas, the money sits in an escrow account in a local bank where it earns interest. It remains unclear who the beneficiaries of the crude interest is. This deal has led to high cost of oil products sourced through the Northern Corridor Transit route, the Kenya route. The freight and premium rates for the May 2023 cargoes were higher in the Northern Corridor by 61% compared to the Central Corridor. Northern Corridor is the run, running Mombasa, Nairobi, Malaba, Kampala, and to DRC. The Central Corridor, the one that comes from Dar es Salaam all the way to Rwanda, Uganda, and DRC. That rise in freight and premium is reflected at the pump. That is why, that is, that is what has pushed Uganda and other forward markets like South Sudan, Eastern DRC, Rwanda, and Burundi to consider importing goods through the Central Corridor or Tanzania route. Uganda is shifting to the Central Corridor, meaning that they are going to be using the port of Dar es Salaam or Tanga rather than Mombasa. The volume it ferries via Kenya pipeline has dropped by 52% from, from 70%. So other than making petroleum products ever more costly, the deal is going to kill Kenya, the Kenya pipeline company as soon as this year. You need to know that it is the Ugandan market that arms the Kenya pipeline company for an exchange. The transit volumes account for 51% of Kenya pipeline company's revenue, which stands at an average of 2.6 billion shillings per month. When the company loses in the volume transported, it results in higher tariffs, which is transferred to the local consumer in terms of higher cost of petroleum products. A 10% reduction in the transit volumes would result in a 5% increase in tariffs, which is reflected in the pumps in terms of cost of fuel. The change of route by landlocked trading partners will force a number of Kenyan oil marketing companies and logistic firms to close shop. Of course, this leads to job losses, loss of foreign exchange, loss of revenue for the country, as a result of KPC losing transit share. Ideally, Kenya should have provided a pipeline and storage capacity and location for Uganda market. Kenya should also have allowed the direct participation of the Uganda oil marketers in sourcing petroleum products through the Northern Corridor route. Action was written into the deal the Ruto administration could not allow neighbors in, in fear of exposure. Consequently, the KPC is set to lose substantial business to Tanzania, to Tanzania, sorry. Uganda's shift to the Central Corridor will most certainly influence Rwanda, Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo, 
until Sudan. As KPC loses business, it will charge more for its product to stay afloat, hence the ever-rising cost of petroleum products. The deal only ended up creating irregular supplies and higher prices. Open tender system allowed for competitive sourcing of fuel. Monopolistic tendencies for purposes of maximizing profit goes against the demand for efficiency and the need for lower prices. It is going to drive a number of oil marketing firms out of business, leading to job losses and loss of revenue for the government. The deal that Ruto signed with the oil companies as excessively high prices and premiums compared to those witnessed in the open tender systems. They are as high as an additional $50 per metric ton. In the end, Kenya is losing billions of shillings in taxes because the three companies picked to spearhead this deal do not pay the 30% corporate tax. Shielding companies, uh, shielding the three companies from this tax is the reason Ruto told Kenyans that it was a G2G deal. Your guess is as good as mine on who is pocketing the unpaid corporate tax. But the burden of the unpaid corporate tax is passed to Kenyans at the pump. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our stand. Mr. Mio.